One of the invocations in the Litany of the Blessed Virgin Mary is, Virgin Most Merciful, pray for us. Most people I run into are enthused by our present Holy Father, Pope Francis. Even non-Catholics that I meet are quick to speak to me of their admiration of this man, who is very obvious in his recognition of the poor, the disadvantaged, those who lack power in their life. While I'm not one to praise one Pope at the expense of others, comparing one person to another can fail to appreciate someone's true gifts, I agree that Pope Francis stands out. His symbolic gestures seem well-considered and expressive of his spirit. He gains the respect of some who otherwise feel that church leaders don't speak their language. He speaks off the cuff, like he's having a conversation with his listeners. It comes as no surprise that one of his recurring themes is dialogue. Another is mercy. Mercy is one of those topics that seems to belong to religion. It's a religious term. But it can be parroted by people who have little personal experience of it. If I were to try and define it, I would say mercy is the inclination to make allowances for human weakness. It speaks of forgiveness, but only partially. We forgive those who have already offended us. Forgiveness is the ability to let go of our own hurts and overlook the harms done to us by another. Mercy is that, but it is more. Even in circumstances where I have not been hurt by another, I am merciful if I receive the other with compassion, knowing that by their human frailty they may dishonor me or offend what is precious to me. The person who is merciful, full of mercy, meets all other people recognizing that there is a common humanity that we share, that none of us has greater value or worth than others. It recognizes all others as equals, brothers and sisters in a common humanity. Mercy is indeed a religious term. Jesus spoke of it and expressed it often in his ministry. Pope Francis walks in venerable footsteps. I had the opportunity recently to read a biography of the Holy Father. Titled Pope Francis, Untying the Knots, the reference is to a painting of the Blessed Virgin Mary that he discovered in a church in Augsburg while on sabbatical in Germany. It depicted Mary untying a series of knots from ribbon that flowed from her hands. Father Bergoglio was captivated by this image, bought a postcard of the painting, and on returning to Buenos Aires, had a local artist there reproduce it. He then had it hung and venerated in a local church. Reading the life of Father Jorge Bergoglio, already knowing his popularity as our Pope, I was somewhat dismayed by the account of his life as a young Jesuit priest. Obviously recognized for his skills as a leader, he was the director of novices in his Argentinian province of Jesuits, as well as the provincial superior. Relying on very credible sources, the author of this biography paints the picture of a very severe and demanding leader, self-important, and showing favoritism to those in his own camp while dismissing others. Both within and outside his Jesuit community, he had loyal friends and persistent detractors. Even after becoming the Pope, his detractors have not let up their opposition. Without going into details that could only be known of Pope Francis's conscience and soul, it is obvious that by the time Father Bergoglio was made a bishop, he had experienced a conversion. Not an Ebenezer Scrooge sort of conversion, that happens all of a night, not like St. Paul on his way to Damascus, which occurs as quickly as being blinded on a dusty road, but a conversion nonetheless, one which happens over time, time spent listening deeply to God in prayer and to one's close friends in quiet conversation. By the time he became an auxiliary bishop of Buenos Aires, he was a changed man. He had discovered what mercy is, what it is to feel with humanity, especially the poor and destitute, the handicapped and prisoners, those who mourn and weep. Because others have been merciful to him, 
Pope Francis can speak in the first person singular about mercy. What has been your experience of mercy in your own life? Has someone been merciful to you? Have you shown extraordinary mercy to another? As a virtue, being merciful is a sign of great personal character. You may have seen the award-winning movie of the true story, Schindler's List. Oskar Schindler was a businessman in Nazi Germany who ran a machine factory at a concentration camp, by means of which he tried to save as many Jews as possible from extermination. In one scene of the film, Schindler is speaking to the Herr Kommandant, Amon Goethe, about power and mercy. He used as an example the power of the Roman Emperor. A man stole something, he's brought in before the Emperor, he throws himself down on the ground, he begs for mercy, he knows he's going to die, and the Emperor pardons him. That's power. Mercy does have a power to it, though it is often thought of to be a sign of sentimentality or softness. I know many people who struggle to reconcile mercy with justice. The demands of each take us humans in different directions. I think it's only a very strong faith and commitment to Jesus Christ that can grow mercy in our hearts. You may recall the massacre of school children in an Amish community in Pennsylvania in October of 2006. Five young girls were murdered that day, and five others seriously wounded. The reaction of the community of strong believers stunned the rest of the world. As one of the brethren said, I don't think there's anybody here that wants to do anything but forgive and not only reach out to those who have suffered a loss in that way, but to reach out to the family of the man who committed these acts. This is the imitation of Christ at its most stark. It calls for a strong spirit. It demands faith. Virgin Most Merciful, pray for us. Show us how to be merciful.